Thank you very much, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Tim Graham from Virgin Atlantic, and with me is Kevin O'Sullivan from CETA Labs. Um, as you may be aware, Virgin Atlantic is a long-haul airline that operates out of the UK to uh, 38 destinations worldwide. And for a long time, we've liked to shake things up in the airline industry when it comes to product and service. Uh, we were the first airline to offer individual TVs to business class passengers, uh, one of the pioneers of the premium economy cabin, and we rolled out the world's first fully flat beds to our business class passengers. But we never like to stand still, and in a recent survey we did amongst 10,000 airline passengers from across the world on the future of air travel, uh, the results showed that the number of people travelling by plane has skyrocketed in recent decades, but the experience has lessened. 42% of travellers worldwide, riding, rising to 53% in the UK, said flying is less glamorous than it used to be, and I think we can all agree to that. Uh, when asked what would improve their experience of flying in the future, 55% of them said that Wi-Fi on board would be the most appealing aspect, second only to bigger windows and more space on board. Almost a third of UK passengers said they'd like to see personalised menus that you can order in advance, and 19% wanted electronic boarding passes that don't have to be printed every time you fly. Well, some of this we do today, such as the mobile boarding passes. But it's fair to say that we've struggled to truly innovate in technology, thanks partly to the legacy systems that many airlines uh, use, which date back to mainframes of the 1960s. Clearly, there's an appetite for change, and that's where my role as IT innovation manager comes in. I'm responsible for looking at both emerging and existing technology uh, to identify where and how it can be used to enhance customer experience. However, I won't profess that we have all the answers and therefore collaborating with partners is key to success. We have a long-standing relationship with CETA who uh, are a global aviation technology company and when the opportunity arose late last year to work with their labs team to trial wearable technology in a real-world environment, we felt it'd be a great partnership. CETA and Virgin looked at a number of possible opportunities within the airport environment, including aircraft turnaround and engineering processes, but finally settled on running a six-week customer-facing trial in our upper-class wing. Our aim is to find out how practical this technology is in an airport environment and how much it can enhance an already established process. So from the minute our upper-class business passengers arrive at our dedicated drop-off area at London Heathrow's Terminal 3, uh, a dispatcher uh, on the left of the screen there allocates one of our premier service agents to meet and greet the passenger curbside. Uh, for the trial, this is done using a web application on an iPad, and all the agent has to do is enter the registration number of the arriving limo, which then retrieves the relevant data from numerous back-end airline systems. Information about the arriving passenger, their destination, the current departure and arrival times, frequent flyer mileage, advanced passenger information, available seats, as well as arrival drop-off limo details and return pickup details are then pushed directly to agents wearing Google Glass and Sony smartwatches. And on the screen there, you can see an example of some of the data that the Google Glass wearers see uh, on their display. Uh, feedback from customers and agents is also helping to shape the solution, and we're adding additional data on a weekly basis to help agents to process passengers more efficiently and enable them to provide a more personalised service. The idea is to reduce the number of times the agent has to step behind a desk to look something up for the passenger and therefore breaking that crucial uh, eye contact with the passenger. Um, again, here you can see some examples of the information received in Google Glass on top right and uh, bottom left is the Sony smartwatch. So what have we learned so far? Well, customer feedback um, a few have asked what data we're accessing about them or are concerned that uh, with glass we're photographing them or using facial recognition to identify them. Uh, we're not. 
Once the agents explain what information they have and how they're using the technology to speed up their journey, they're generally very supportive. And we're getting lots of passengers asking to try on glass and get their photo taken with them on. Um, our hosts have fed back that both watches and glasses are comfortable for, to wear for extended periods. The screen is readable, uh, but we have had to manage the amount of content on each screen to make this as easy as possible. Uh, they also love the fact that they've got a reduced amount of paper that they have to use, and we've removed the need for them to use radios for communication. The agents with the watches um, are, however, having to point out that they're using them to, as they're uh, not that visible to passengers, and they're conscious that somebody constantly looking at their wrist could seem rude to passengers. Um, in terms of the technology itself, it's been pretty reliable. Battery life uh, was a concern to us, and although the devices need charging daily, they generally last an entire shift, uh, and these guys are working sort of eight to 10 hour shifts at a time. Connectivity has been a little bit more problematic. Uh, we've been using 3G smartphones with Bluetooth connections to the wearable devices, uh, which has proved a little bit unreliable at times, possibly due to the high concentration of mobile devices in use at Heathrow. Uh, switching to Wi-Fi, which we've done just recently uh, for connectivity has increased reliability. Um, we've got a couple of weeks left to run before we'll be in a position to do a full evaluation and decide where we're going to take this in the future. But the feedback uh, from the media as well has been uh, extremely positive. It's uh, generated a lot of excitement in the whole area of wearable technology. I think this because this is one of the first uh, real-world practical examples um, in a working environment. It's taken both us at Virgin Atlantic and CETA by surprise somewhat at the uh, amount of interest out there. And the media are the ones that have been asking all the difficult questions about uh, privacy and uh, you know, what are we using the data for and are we sharing it with people? And we've been quite clear that we're not. It's our data and our passengers' data and uh, it remains private to the two people involved in the transaction. Um, now, hopefully, I've got a little video to show you of some of the media coverage uh, that we've received. Uh, or maybe not. Okay, uh, in that case, I will invite Kevin onto stage uh, to give you uh, a, an overview of how Google Graphs is, uh, and the wearable technology um, Initiative was approached by CETA and uh, give you a quick demo in action. All right, thank you, Tim. Uh, oof, Jesus. Um, okay, so you'll have to just bear with me a second while I uh, just get set up here uh, to give you the demo. Um, I think on the earlier session, people were talking about wearable tech being first generation, and I think clear indication of that is that I've still got to go through an awful lot of faff to set up and present what I see on glass. So. Uh, and while I'm doing this, um, I guess I'll explain who CETA are. So CETA are an IT provider uh, in the air transport industry and we're a B2B company. Um, so you may not have heard of us but you certainly have used our software before. And I work in CETA Lab, where we do all the research and development. And last year, we started looking at wearable tech. We saw that that was an interesting trend, an emerging trend. So our first work with, uh, first projects with wearable tech were all in-house. We just did an assessment of what the capabilities are, well, what was out there for starters. Uh, and when we started, glass wasn't really available. Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, so, so we did work with uh, Vuzix. Um, you know, one of the first projects we did was to take the Vuzix M100, which is another uh, smart glass, and we built an application that would scan a passport and scan a boarding pass and compare the data and give a board, no board uh, indicator. 
uh, we did some projects on smart watches and our initial research was just really to figure out, well, what is the state of the art? What's out there? What's available? How good is the camera? Do you want to, Andy, do you want to roll the, the video? I see it's all set now. I guess not, we'll stick with that. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're trying to understand, you know, how long does the battery last? Is it comfortable? Can you wear the devices all day? What are the cameras like? You know, are they good enough for scanning passports and, and barcodes? Uh, and we learned an awful lot last year. And then, you know, so into 2014, we're continuing to work on it. And what we wanted to do was take these devices and actually build applications for airline staff and airport staff and get them to wear it and get them to try it out and find out you know, from the staff and from the customers, uh, the passengers, you know, what they made of it. Uh, and that's what we did with Virgin Atlantic. So um, I'm going to give you, I guess, a quick demo of Glass, just in case anyone hasn't seen it. I guess in a wearable tech show, you should know what it is. But uh, for those of you who haven't tried, what you see up on the screen there is, is what I see through the glass.